Hello, my name is Georgie Barrett. I'm a tech journalist and a broadcaster. Um, and I uh, host a show here in the UK called The Gadget Show. So I joined it back in 2017 and it's brilliant fun. I get to travel the world testing out the latest in consumer technology. Um, as a journalist, I've written for the likes of The Guardian, Marie Claire, Tech City News, and I'm really fascinated about how technology is shaping us both culturally and socially. And I do a lot of this. I do a lot of conferences, a lot of keynotes, a lot of panel discussions, speaking all about the impact technology is having on the way we work and live. So one of my keynotes that I do is called the Tech Taurus Travelling into the Near Future. Um, and the idea of it is that I use different clips that I've done whilst on the Gadget Show um, to look at some of the technologies that are on the horizon that are really going to impact us. Um, and a really standout moment for me is when I was over in Las Vegas recently um, and I got driven by... AI, a fully autonomous vehicle around the actual streets of Las Vegas. Um, so it was an experience that um, was truly, truly mind blowing. And instead of sitting in the in the front seat, I sat in the back seat. No one was behind the driving wheel. And it was only AI that took us um, on maybe a, a sort of 20 minute journey. And I mean, there were properly buses pulling out, pedestrians crossing. We went on the highway at one moment. Um, and not only was the experience just sort of mesmerizing in terms of, um, you know, AI being able to sort of handle all this information and safely get me about the place. But I found my reaction to it really, really interesting. So when I first got in the car, you know, I, I felt nervous. I, I could feel my adrenaline pumping. I could be like, oh God, this feels really unnatural and actually not very safe. But very quickly, I mean, within the next sort of five, five minutes, five, 10 minutes, I was like, this AI is a better driver than what I am. Um, and it just felt like I could really put my trust in it because, you know, it, it, it was being able to handle all these different situations. And what it really made me realise that if technology does a job and it does the job better than what we would do if, if you know, we were just left to our own devices, then very quickly we will put our trust in it. So technology is impacting the world of work enormously. I mean, you only need to look at um, you know how technology completely transformed the way we worked during the pandemic as everyone removed remotely, literally overnight. But it, it doesn't just end there. You know, it, the world of work is going to be impacted by AI, VR, AR, conversational interfaces. You know, a multitude of different things. Um, and and obviously, the really big one is AI. And there's many, many ways that AI is going to impact the way we work. Something that I'm really interested in is um, how we're going to be forming this hybrid model with AI as we as humans work alongside these AI systems. Um, and an interesting example of this is that there's a there's a piece of technology out there at the moment that can quite accurately tell a manager whether they're you know, one of their employees is thinking of leaving. And it does this through quite a complicated algorithm. Now, what do you do as a manager if your piece of AI gives you this information? How do you handle that? How do you then go and approach your employee? What's the sort of next step? And it's these interesting pinch points as we work alongside AI that we need to think about more and more. And a big common theme between all this is developing the soft skills within our team because AI will be able to do the repetitive work, it'll be able to do the number crunching, it'll be able to do, you know, the things that the sort of common queries you get, but it'll be down to us to do the, the complicated stuff, the things that can require communication and creativity and critical thinking. So it's really thinking about how we can not only cultivate that within our teams, but how we're going to employ the right people that really show those skill sets. So social media is something that I'm really fascinated by, by how it's actually impacting us, um, especially when it comes to millennials, my cohort and Gen Z. 
because the impact that this is having having on us makes a really, really big difference when it comes to this generation being in the workplace and, and how that plays out. So an example of this is, um, you know, technology has sped everything up. It's allowed us to ha- have everything, um, you know, by literally a swipe of a, of a button. And it's that instantaneous nature that sometimes then gets applied to the workplace where we see millennials and Gen Z really hungry for the next thing. And then alongside this, we have social media and social media doesn't give an accurate portrayal of exactly what's going on in other people's lives. So you're constantly involved in what other people are up to on their timeline. But ultimately, it causes what I like to call a little bit of life dysmorphia, where actually, somehow you feel a little bit inadequate, that somehow you're not quite living up to expectation. And these two things combined often lead to people wanting to job hop, wanting that promotion before maybe they're ready, just feeling a little bit frustrated. So um, in one of my keynotes, I sort of analyze all this, analyze the impact technology and social media is having on this particular cohort and how you as businesses and as bosses can best handle it. But you know, social media isn't all bad. I also think it's an incredible tool and actually seeing some of the advantages social media brings and how you can harness that, how you can harness that to create great on online and offline communities and how you can use it to really communicate to those people, whether they are your customers or the people that you want working for you. A big consumer trend that I'm really excited about is the advancement of conversational interfaces. So that's the like of Siri, your Alexas, things like that. Um, what's really interesting about these is that we've seen them progress hugely over the past five years. It's now considered not that unusual to be at home speaking out loud to your gadget. So there's been a big behavior change that's happened there. Not only that, the next iteration we're going to see of them is them being able to answer long, sent, like long conversations and, and, and come back with moral arguments. In fact, IBM are working on something like this already. It's called the IBM Project Debater, and it's been going since 2012. Um, And this piece of conversational interface can now form maybe a five minute argument all about a, a moral topic. So what we'll see in not so long is that our our Alexas will be able to give us, you know, advice. We'll be able to actually have a normal conversation with them. We'd maybe be able to ask them not just, you know, what the time is or or what the weather is outside. Instead, we can be saying, you know, should we take that job? What should we study at university? And maybe should we dump our boyfriend? So startups really fascinate me. I've written a lot about startups for Tech City News, specifically looking at the Silicon Roundabout. So that is the startup scene here in London. Um, And what's really interesting about them, especially when it relates to big business, is how you can replicate some of that startup culture. Because what startups are really good at is that they can attract and retain millennial and Gen Z talent. So um, one of my keynotes really explores some of the things that startups do to really, really um, connect with this cohort and how you as a business can replicate it. next for me in a couple of weeks time I'm going to be start filming the next series of the gadget show Um, I'm also doing some stuff with the BBC so lots of filming coming up Um, I'm not only that I'm working on a new podcast idea which is all about tech well-being seeing how we can better live alongside of our gadgets to reduce the noise and the distraction but also enhance their life building qualities Um, and then I'm doing lots more of this lots more um, corporate work from um, delivering keynotes to panel discussions to hosting awards ceremonies. So lots and lots of varied things ahead.